Shalom, shalom, chabarim, shalom, greetings, greetings, greetings. Here, here to share some discoveries in the LOJ, the Lion of Judah Society, here in the service and in the intelligence, you know, about intelligence, you know, looking at the different information, you know, the different data, and seeking to make intel out of it. So this is a new discovery right here in the LOJ University right here. Did you know that Moses in the revised, right, authorized and revised Amharic Bible, the Book of the Seven Seals, Revelation 5, 5, the Bible of the Conquering Lion of the Tribe of Judah, his Imperial Majesty Haile Selassie I, elect of God, King of Kings of Ethiopia, in the official Bible, the Royal Amharic Bible, and we've also checked this in the Gutters manuscripts. It's very interesting right here what we share that Moses, Moshe, was called Tehut. Now, Tehut, in translation from the Afro-Asiatic languages, like we have Hebrew is an Afro-Asiatic language, we have Amharic, an Afro-Asiatic language, we have the Ge'ez, uh, ancient Shemitic language, and we have the root right there in the Nile, the Nile Valley, right, and also the plateau, the highlands, the Kui land, the God land, Ethiopia land. This recent Torah reading and feeding, we had the 36th of article study, and that's known as Bit Ha'elotika for Shabbat, when thou lightest up, when thou steppest up, step up to light the lights concerning the menorah. In the Amharic, Senbet Situlequis, when you light up, right? So that particular Torah reading and feeding, from that particular Torah reading and feeding, I think from chapter 8 of Numbers to chapter 12. Some very interesting highlights, and this was one point that we had shared on the Rastafari Israelites. You can check out the live stream right there, there, there. So the second part, the first day, first day service, you know, for um, Rastafari first day step up we call it the step up bringing out the name in the hebrew but here's the interesting thing concerning motion right concerning motion let's see if we can bring this forward right here 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 let's first just address what we have on the screen here in acts of the apostles chapter 7 verse 22 it reads according to the kjv it says and moses was learnt in all the wisdom of the egyptians and was mighty in words and in deeds. So here we have um, Caduce Estefano, St. Stephen, one of the first martyrs of the Nazarene. He is bearing witness. He's testifying here. And, and he actually gets killed for this particular testimony. Let's note that. He gets martyred for this particular testimony. This is part of the fullness of the testimony. Zooming in right here on verse 22, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7. He had verse 22, Why Lumad Moshe bekol chakmat mitzrayi, why he gibor be a debarim uab maesim, u ve maesim, uv maesim, ube maesim. So here, 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 have the Hebrew right here, Acts of the Apostles, right? Chapter 7, chapter 7, verse 22. It reads, why Lumad and he was learnt, why Lumad, Moshe and Moses was learnt, because in all Chakmat, the Chakmat, Hebrew for wisdom, right? Wisdom, the Chakmat Mitzrayim, all the wisdom, or even you can say bring out the sense of the wisdoms, the wisdom of the Egypts, Mitzrayim, the upper and the lower. They used to refer to it as the double heavens, right? So the hakmat, the call, the call hakmat mitzrayim, wayehi, wayehi, and he be gibor, 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 a mighty man, a gibor, be debarim in the words, right? It says in words, but debarim also is referring to the ten, the ten words, debarim, the words, u be ma'esim. And in ma'isim, ma'isim is in the deed. So both in word and deed. So right here, we have Acts of the Apostles. So the question here, right, not even really a question, right, so much, but a, a sharing of this right here, right, concerning Moshe and concerning 
Egypt and concerning the wisdom and concerning the fact that Moses, right, according to the authorized Revised Amharic Bible, the Book of the Seven Seals, the Metzaf Kedus, the Bible of Kedemawi Hala Selassie. Let's bring this out right here, here, here. Here we're going to go right here. So here we are, you see the top one there is Orit Zechulk. Let's bring up the verse right here. Let's bring up the verse. There we go. There's the verse right there. So we're using the IOTA, Yota, the Yota software, the IOTA or the Yot uh, software. Here we have Orit Ze Hulk. Ze Hulk. Orit. Orit in the Royal Amharic, coming from the Ethiopic, right? Royal Order, Ethiopian Hebrew roots right here. Orit. To say Orit, Orit is to say Torah, Ethiopically. The Orit. So the Orit Ze, Ze of Hulk. Hulk. Hulk is the old Gutter's word for the numbering. Right, the numbering, accounting, c computation, numbering, right, the Torah of the numbering, right, orit ze hulk. So here we have chapter 12, verse 3. And in the Amharic, the royal Amharic, Nugusa Neges, Kwan Kwa, Lesana Nugusa Neges, the language of the King of Kings. You can remember with the word of prophecy in Zephaniah chapter 3, I think around verse 9, verse 10, for then he would turn to the peoples. Uh, pure language from beyond the rivers right of Ethiopia. So here it says Musain be midrlai kalut so chulu yilk ejig tohut so nebre Musain and Moses Musay. Now it's interesting because Muse in the Ethiopic right in the Ethiopic when we get into the linguistic roots of the, the name and the term Muse, Muse is also the head of a fraternal order. The head of it, it's a name, yes, it's both a name, but Ethiopically, right when we get to the roots of the Kemet, the Kemet, the Kemet, the roots of the Kemet is the Tobia, is the Ethiopia. We have proved this, and it's easy to prove every inundation, every inundation of the Nile basically proves that the Kemet comes from the Tob or Tobia, or the Kui land. The, the Kush land, Upper Kush. When you say Upper Kush, Lower Kush is Nubia. Upper Kush, you're talking about Tob, the Tob, the Kui land, the God land, the good land, or as it's known today as Tobia or Ethiopia. So Muse is the head, is a term for a head of a fraternal order. So we see even in the Orit or the Torah that Moses, Muse, is the head of a fraternal order. We can even say that that direct order initially right was the levitical we say the levitical link with the levitical order because of moshe's position because of the fact that he was the you know adopted son of pharaoh's daughter right who we identify as hatshepsut but we'll get into that this here first just to show this evidence that we have here here it says musaim and moses bemidrlai bemidrlai kalut sawochulu yilik more than right all of the men, the Sawoch, Kalut that were the Midr Lai, the Midr, Midr is the land, right? The Midr Lai, Kalut Sawoch Hulu Yilik, Ijik. Now, the highlighted word right there is Tehut. That highlighted word right there is Tehut, Tehut, right? We're from Tehut, right? Coming down the now into now valley civilizations where we get the term Tut, right? Or Tut or Thoth. We have tut, one form in the Latin, in the English transliteration. Another form, sometimes you find it as thought, thought, T-H-O-T-H, -H, or also as T-U-T. But we start to look at the ancient etymology, we have T-H-U, T-H-U-T, -T, right? So we have right there, the highlighted T-H-U-T, -T, right there, there, there. It says, tohut so nebra. All right, now the translation here, right, and they put it as a parenthetical in this translation in the parentheses, but we don't find that when we're looking at some of the other ancient scripts, looking at the Royal Amharic, the King of Kings Bible, or when we are looking at the Gutters, right, or even the Hebrew that we just shared right there, it's not a parenthetical, right, but it says now the man Moshe was very meek, right, above all the men who were upon 
the face of the earth. So this word meek, that's an interesting terminology when we look at the, um, let's bring up right here, we have anal, anav, in modern Hebrew they say anav, right? But actually anau, anau, anayo, anayo, anau, 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 anayo. So we have anau, anayo. We're going to bring this up a little bit more as we, we just shown from the Amharic, right? From the Metzav Kedus, in the Book of the Seven Seals, Revelation 5.5. 5 from the Lion of Judah, the King of Kings Bible right here, right? We can clearly see that according to the Royal Nemharic, the Lasana Negus Neges, right? The tongue, the language of the King of Kings matching the prophecy that we also have within the prophet Zephaniah, for then he would turn to the people a pure language from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Here we have Moshe, being called by Yahweh, Yahweh HaKadosh Baruch Baruch Hashem, according to the King of Kings Bible here, Tehut, right, Tehut. So now this here also links with Acts of the Apostle, chapter 7, verse 22. So right here, 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 the question right here, 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 right, is was Moses, right, was Moshe, right, <laughs> Moshe, was he Tehut? We're not saying the ancient thought, but was this is is this giving us a hint right here? Are we getting a powerful hint, right, of the real world connection, right, of Ethiopia, the Bible, Moshe, his Ethiopian wife, and recall in the thirty sixth sabbatical study for Biha Lotika for 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 Sabbath for Shabbat lights us up, right? For Sabbath light us up. Right? We was calling it Sabbath step us up because the Biha Elotica getting into the linguistics of the of the Hebrew right there. But in that Torah portion, the previous Torah portion, as we mentioned, we have the live streams available at the Rastafari Israelites, right? And especially in part two, we get to get into a little more detail, right? And it was the last hour we went through the the basic questions on the Torah reading and feeding and also some of the advanced questions. And there was one particular, I think it was one of the last questions. Let's see if we can bring this up right here. Brothers and sisters, just hold on for a moment. So Moses, according to the King of Kings Bible, right? according to the Lion of the tribe of Judah, Root of David, Revelation 5 and 5 Bible, as well as we can also show and prove within the word of the prophet, where he says, from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia. Now, the rivers of Ethiopia are very important here in the prophecy of the scripts, but it was also very important in ancient Kemet, in ancient Mitzrayim, in the ancient Mitzvahs, in ancient Kemet, Komet, right? So we have the question here. This is the question here, just to share this. Some of the brothers and sisters, no doubt, got to hear it. Others might have to just follow up, right, if one is willing. So right here, 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 here was the question. It was the 41st question, one of the advanced questions. How does the Torah, ha-Torah, right, the Hebrew Torah, in the Ge'ez we have orit, the orit, right? Interesting enough, we look at the roots and we got a similar root for both of these words. The Hebrew Torah direction instruction orit, the orit, orit, sums up the virtues. How does the Torah, the orit, sum up the virtues and greatness of Moshe? How does ha Torah? Well, simply by stating that Moshe was the most humble man on earth. And this is the point of reference right here. Right, Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. So, when we go from the Hebrew, right, even going, as we say, from on this right here, from the low, the basic degrees to high degrees, what do we find, right? We find that Moshe, right, is called Anal, right, in the Hebrew. Let's bring this up right here, Anal, right, Anal in the Hebrew. Let's see right here, here, here. So here, right, and we're going to show that According to the scripture, according to the King of Kings Bible, there are two, right? There are two men, right, that are referred to as being Tehut, 
So the terminology is to hoot, to hoot. All right, let's just bring this up right here to hoot so ones can see this a little more clear. Let's go to gallery right here and let's come out of this for a moment, all right, and bring this up right here. Here's the word that we are, here's the word that we are focusing on right here, to hoot. All right, to hoot. We have it nice and large right there in the glyphs. T hu t. All right. What's interesting if we read it <laughs> normally the Amharic is read from left to right. All right, but we know in ancient um Kemet and Mitzrayim, we have to look at the determiner and the facing, in which direction are the characters like facing. Right, in order to know in the hieroglyphs which way to read. But it, either way we read this particular word is still one and the same. But normally, right, the Amharic is read from left to right. The Hebrew from right to left. But whether we read this word from right to left or left to right, it both says the same thing. Tehut, tehut, right, tehut. What does tehut mean? Chabarim. So here, here, here. Now this is the name that's ascribed to both Moshe, right, and to the Mashiach, right, to Moses and to Mashiach. Let's see if we can bring this up right here and just do this right here. Let's see if we got a good connection. We're going to the Abyssinica, right, the Abyssinica. Let's go right here and we're going we're gonna to look it up with, with you. So you see right here, we're going to bring out the glyphs, right, to who... Right, right. So that's also an interesting feature that even if it's mirrored image, there we go, right there. You have to hoot, right there. Even if it's mirror image, right. Even if we have it mirror image, let's just take a snap right there. Even we have it mirror image, it's still the same sound. Whether we read it from left to right, as the Amharic nowadays is read. Or whether we read it from right to left, it's still to hoot. And there are two individuals, right, throughout the entire scripture, right, in the Old and the New Testament. One in the Old Testament, right, and one in the New Testament. And here's where both the descriptor, both of them being known as to hoot, and to hoot in Mitzrayim, in the Het Kapita, Egypta, or Gibbet, Egypt, or Komet, either right, is known as Thoth, right, or Tehut. Right? Now, that's the Ibis head. You know, the Ibis head, they say Netur, Netur, or Netur, right? But what's interesting, what's going to get interesting, here, let's look at what the Ethiopic root meaning. Now, let's also keep this in mind that ancient egyptian language ancient hebrew language ancient ethiopian language we have a afro asiatic linguistically what is first as afro semitic afro asiatic in other words the these two we could say these two cultures we have a blend right especially here linguistically right in these two cultures right and so ethiopia becomes the missing link also Right, concerning the Hebrew connection, right, as well. And what's interesting is that in this Torah reading and feeding for the 36th sabbatical study, our Rastafari sabbatical study for Behalotika, Behalotika, right, we have the narrative of Miriam and Aharon, especially Miriam, speaking against Moshe because of his Ethiopian wife, the Kushawit, the Kushawit wife. So they, they're even in HaTorah. Because one might say, well, why are you going to the Ethiopian, you know, Bible or the Amharic Bible, the King of Kings Bible? Hmm. It should be obvious because of Revelation 5.5. 5. But just in case that's not so obvious, that we also have the narrative. So even the narrative in the fourth book of Moshe, right, it bears witness to what we are now bringing more of the proverbial icing to the cake to. So here we have tehut, right? Tehut, tehut. So it's a syllabic, phonetic language. We have tehut, tehut, tehut. Contracted, it will be tut or tot. Where they have tut, you know, like in the modern today, tut, right? Or even in the other form of thoth, right? T-H-O-T-H. 
But what's the meaning? See, many of the meanings, the most archaic meanings, can only be recovered right when we come to the when we get to the root right of the Nile, the source of the headwaters, the mountain of the moon, the Kui land, the God land, right? In other words, the Tob, Tobio, Ethiopia. That's why we say that Ethiopia is the missing link, both in the so-called um, Mesopotamian, you know, Babylon, Akkad, uh, Kalna, Sumer, as well as the Nile Valley civilization. So this mountain, right, this, this, this rooftop of Africa civilization, we're going to see its ancient roots and its influences, right, in to both of the now both of the river valley civilization to in both of the river valley civilizations that many archaeologists and scholars there'll be a lot of Yamadish there'll be a lot of um you know back and forth some think that the origin was Sumer and and Babylon and an Anunnaki thing others say that it was the Nile Valley civilization but what we'll find is that the key for both of these great ancient cultures and river valley civilization, right, is the Tobe, is the rooftop, what they call the rooftop of Africa, the highlands, the Tobe, the mountains of the moon, right, in Africa. So here we can bring out as well, as we study the linguistics, right, the true meanings, right, of the ancient, we could say Egyptian names of whether it's the natures, the netters, right, or whether it's the principles, right? And here, for example, we're taking Tehut because Moshe is called Tehut and Yeshua is called Tehut. Isn't this interesting? Because we know that both in the, from the Old to the New Testament, the Brit HaYeshana to the Brit Chadasha to the Adis Kidan to New Covenant, especially in the New Covenant, it makes and the, the epistle to the Hebrews makes that connection right there between Moshe, between Moshe and between the Mashiach, the Mashiach, the Messiah. Both of them are Tehut. What is Tehut? Tehut means humble, right? In the Hebrew, we have the term Tachat, Tachat, that is etymologically and Afro-Semitically, Afro-Asiatically connected when we look at the Afro-Asiatic etymology. We're getting into linguistics right here you know that gift of the holy spirit cloven tongue of fire right here right so we have humble to hoot is humble to hoot right also unassuming there's a little typo right there unassuming humbled right timid in that sense gentle humble and lowly right lowly now even that word right there i meek and lowly we have that right within the new testament concerning Yeshua, right? Yeshua's own testimony, right? Where he bears witness, right? He bears witness that he is Tehut. Yehwah, right? Yehwah Ani, right? And Tehut Libi, right? Tehut Libi, in other words, Tehut Libi, uh, humble in heart. He is Tehut, heartically speaking, Ha Mashiach Yeshua Ha Notri, right? Jesus of Nazareth, the Nazareth to Jesus, he's testifying, right, to being Tehut, right? And here's what's interesting in the Gutters. So this is the Gutters. We're going to bring up the Gutters, but we have the Gutters right now in the LOJ, the reprint, the manuscripts. We have the Ethiopic New Testament as well as the Ethiopic, um, the Octatech. Many people refer to it as a Pentateuch, but in the Ethiopic, in the Beta Israel, right, you say of Ethiopia, and the Israelites of Ethiopia tradition, right, and also with the Judeo Coptic Church, we refer to it as the Octatech. So instead of the Pentateuch, the five books, also inclusive is the books of Joshua, Judges, and Cherut, Cherut, or Ruth. So there's eight books, but we have that in the hard copy, so not able to really show that right here, 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 just touching on some basics, right? That Moses is called Thoth. Moshe is called Thoth, right? Or Tehut, right? And now we get a clearer meaning, right? Of what the word and the name Tehut, right? Actually, right? Actually mean. 
here is it right here 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 just 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 writ large right here and the interesting thing about this right here is that either way right either way we read this though the usual reading is from left to right almost similar to how we read English today right but even if we were to read it like Hebrew or some of the archaic you know languages Afro-Shemitic forms like the Hebrew and we were to read it from right to left it still says the same thing so it says the same thing so this is a very unique you know a very unique um word a very unique name right here that's applied to Moshe right that's applied to Moses in the Brit Hayashana in what's known as the we say the Old Testament or the Tanakh if you please as well as in the Brit Hadasha as well as in the Brit Hadasha this Chabarim is very very significant and once again Ethiopia the royal order right of the Ethiopian Hebrews after the order of Melchizedek provides these fundamental clues and this evidence right this evidence this is very very important evidence right that will yield much more dividends and sadly many of the pro-black comedic scholars have avoided my right, the linguistic studies right that they should be about so that they can truly prove the origin of even ancient Kemet right to truly be as many would say today African or we the black peoples of the world right more directly the origins in the Horn of Africa, particularly that Tob, that whole region was Tobia. Now the Tob is a Hebrew term that means good. Etoba Arza, Etoba Arza means the good land. Etoba, 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 Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Tobia, Etoba. Looking at the archaic name. Now the Egyptians refer to it as the Kui land, the land of the gods. Well, this is interesting. Because many of the ancient Egyptian gods or netters, netchers, netchert, netarit, netar, netarit, you know, many of their names are still being guessed at. There's still a lot of guesswork, right? And even many of the scholars, right? Even within um, um, Sir E. A. Wallace Butch, the Victorian Egyptologist, some of his works, one thing he did often point to, right, concerning ancient Egypt, is the African. Right, an Ethiopian connection, right, as well as in his hieroglyphic, the dictionary, pointing to that. If you really read it carefully, he points to and alludes the significance, right, of Ethiopia and particularly of the Ethiopian linguistics and the Ethiopian language. Here, I'd like to hear up our brother Legacy Alen, right, Legacy Alen and his works on the Amrinya Tigrinya. And decipherments, right, of many ancient documents, ancient scrolls, particularly the connection of the Amhara, the 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 Tigra, the Ethiopian culture, right, at the root of the now Valley civilization. Now, we seek to expand that even by connecting ancient Mesopotamia, right, or the Aram Naharaim. You know, the two rivers, when speaking about the Akkad, Babel, uh, uh, Kalna, speaking of over in the east, right? But more to come on that. Let's just touch on this one here a little bit more. Brothers and sisters, just a little more to show and prove right here, here, here. Yes, I. So Moses, so Moshe, Tahut. And it doesn't say just that, that he was Tahut, he was Ijig, Ijig. Now the Ijig, Ijig, Ijig in the Royal Amharic very much, right? And even in comparison with other Sowoch or other So. So is interesting. So, right? In the Amharic, So for man, human being, So. And then we have Sa, right? Sa, 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 So. Also in the ancient. Rayan al Komet in the language of the people, right? The language of the Egyptians, right? So Moses, Tahut, right? Tahut. Now, what is connected with Tahut, right? Now, this is not to get into a longer study. Most ones and ones can familiarize themselves as well. But this particular um, Netta, right? This particular um, God, 
right? As we can say, you know, quote unquote, some might prefer say, well, the netters, you know, were actually not real people, but they represented principles or powers or forces. But from our study, you know, our humble study of ancient uh, Mitzrayim, ancient Kemet, Smai, Tawi, you know, the other names that that land is referred to as, it's very interesting because the ancient peoples both accepted, right, the phi cycle and the metaphysical significance. They both accepted, you know, that the uh, Netters, the Netaru, you know, that they were the gods, you know, were personified. And those principles could be personified, but yes, truly indeed, they represent in the highest, right, the highest abstraction, they represent principles. But these principles can be personified. You hear a lot of people talk about allegories, that everything is an allegory, right, and it's just symbolic and it never really happened. But the ancients had a different, the ancients had a radically different view. They accepted the abstractions, right? But they also recognized the manifestation of these abstractions in real time. What are we saying by this? We can point this out even with the Sutanet, Sutan Bets, Bait, Bittis, right? The, the kings, the Paro, the Pharaohs, and the great ones. Many of the men and people who lived were ascribed as living embodiments. Right? The men and the women, right? and some children as well, right? and some even some creatures as living embodiments of these higher, more abstract, we can say metaphysical or some might say philosophical, you know, more abstract principles. Right? So I point that out right there because the connection of Moshe, Moses, according to the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews and looking at the Ethiopian manuscripts, looking at the authorized revised Amharic Bible, the Book of the Seven Seals, the King of Kings Bible, also looking at the Ge'ez, right, the Ethiopic manuscripts as well, and to both find within the linguistics, right, a key connection, right, even the name Tehut. If you look at the glyphs, if you study the, the hieroglyphs and the glyphs for how the name is spelt, there's some variations, but there's also some consistencies and some of the more archaic spellings, it perfectly matches, right? It perfectly matches the Ethiopic. And then to recognize that the very Kemet, talking about that reddish brown, that black ground, came from the To, from Tovia, from where we get the linguistics, right? So we have the, the natural, right? The natural sustenance. Right, that comes from the very same direction that the ancient Egyptians right, accredited the first time. When he talk about the, the Kedem, the Kedem or the Zatepi, the first time. And he points to the mountain of the moon. They point to the source right, of the Nile waters, of the Hapi, right, the Nile waters. Now, not just the waters originate there. Right? But their very beginning, their, their life, their essence. So how be it, right? their linguistics, the language. Right? And language, as Gormawi Nagus Neges, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah says, language is a key for communication between man and man. Right? Language is the key of communication. Right? It's also the key of culture. His imperial majesty teach I and I, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, teach I and I, that language is the key of culture. So Moshe is clearly said, according to the first quote that we brought up from the scripts, from the Brit Chadasha, the New Testament, the Adis Kidan, from Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, verse 22, and Moshe was learned in all the what? The wisdom, right? The Chakmat, right? The Tibeb, the wisdom of the Egypts. Now in His Majesty's Bible, one peculiar place where we have gubit, gubit, usually in the Amharic Bible we have gubit, 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 right, being used to refer to Egypt. Now when we study, we know that that terminology comes from an old terminology called the het ka pata, Egypta. Right when you contract Hekapata, Egypta, and Egypta become Gibbets, 
Gibbets. And this is where some say the Greeks, you know, came out with that. Now in the Royal M. Hark, we have Gibbets. Gibbets. Now it's not a letter or a sonant, right, that is repeatable and duplicatable in, 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 in the Greek. Now I'll point this out because in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, verse 22, now in the Hebrew it says, Hakmat Mitzrayim. In the Amharic Acts of the Apostles 7.22, it uses the term of Gibtsoch. The Tibeb, Tibeb is wisdom and Gibtsoch. Now, Gibt is singular sense and Gibtsoch is Egypt's. Now, we make much on this because here in Acts 7.22, according to the King of Kings Bible, it says that the wisdom of the Egypt's my, the Egypts. And why is the Egypt significant? Because of the Ethiopian connection. Even with Moshe. Even within the Hebrew, my Torah, my, within the, we say, the canonical and the basic narrative is very clear in the translation, the Ethiopian connection. Even with Moshe, my, firstly, and Yitro, 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 what a interesting Egyptian ancient head name, right? But when we talk about Egypt linguistics and Egypt language, let's not forget that Egypt is an Afro-Asiatic language. So the language itself is in the same category as the Hebrew, right? The biblical Hebrew, right? As the Amharic, the royal Amharic that we refer to as being a sign of Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 9 and 10 for then he would turn to the people of pure language from beyond the rivers of Ethiopia in the 36th sabbatical study Elotica, we have Moshe right where he is called right Ijig Tehut very much very much he is Tehut not just that he is a tahut, like to say one might even imagine a follower, right? But it's saying he is very much, and get this, he is also being called mighty in word and deed. That means that not just somebody who like, for example, you have people who might be Christians, for example. I'm going to use this as an example because Egypt bears a lot with, um, we can say, organized as it got big. Right, denominationalism and, and Christianity. I know some of the comedics don't like this, but if we just be honest, right, it will help us out a lot in knowing the truth, right? That in you have your different denominations, right? You have your different denominations, right? So there's ones who say they're Christian and they believe in Jesus or Christ or God or salvation or what have you, the blood, the cross, so forth and so on. And they believe based on their belief, <coughs> they will be saved. But what they forget, what they forget, what is forgotten, what the scripture talks about, faith without what is dead. Faith without works is dead. So in saying that Moshe here is being identified According to the ancient Ethiopic royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews, the manuscripts and the scrolls, and we first have this identification in the Ge'ez. Now, there's a, another name also, Yewah, 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 Yewah. We're going to touch on that. Each of these names, even the Hebrew name that Moshe is called is quite interesting. Right? For the Hebrew name that he is called in this verse, let's bring this up right here, here, here. Let's do a full of full on this because it's been a long time that we wanted to share this one with the brothers and sisters. And the previous Torah portion allows us to do that even right here. So here, let's go down to the Tanakh. Right? So here we have, here's the Tanakh. It says, With Haish Moshe, Anayo, 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 Me'od, Mikol Ha Adam Asher, Al Pene Ha Adama. So here's the verse right here from Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. So just word by word, and we're reading from right to left. So we're starting out with this, with this right here, here, here. And this is Wi and Haish. In the ancient, the Afro-Asiatic pointing, we say Wi Haish. In modern Hebrew, it might be said as Vihaish, Vihaish, Vihaish. In the modern Hebrew, right, based on that 
uh, uh, Ashkenazi, um, Eastern European um, um, mother tongue in that sense. They would say Vihaish. Right? So in that sense, maybe the Yiddish, the Yiddish influence influences their speaking of the Hebrew, but it's still Hebrew. But we speak it from the Afro-Asiatic. We ha-ish. We and we and ha the ish and the man. We ha-ish. Moshe. We ha-ish. Moshe. And the man Moshe. And the man Moshe. Now you see, right after that, as we come over here, there's two there's two words right here. We have this and we have this, right? Now, the first word, there's a kaf, right? There's a kaf. The other one has a kof. So the kaf is for the katib. The katib is what is found in the written text of the Masoretic Scripture. And this says anau, 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 a Na we. Now the ah, uh, the ah uh is a very hard sound. You know, it's 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 like a guttural sound, and it's distinct from the alef, like in ish. The alef. We have alef, which is like a soft a type of sound, and then we have a hard a type of sound. The ah, uh, the ah, uh, right? The ah uh from the letter ayin, ayin. Now ayin, ayin is the i, ayin. So here we have anau, anau, right? Anau. Modern Hebrew, they'll say anav. Now, the next one that has a parenthesis, right, that we have anayo, 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 anayo. And that has the kof behind it. So the two, one is what is written, and then the other one is what is said. Because sometimes the what is said, right, brings out, you know, more of the sense of the meaning, the full meaning of it. But let's go through this as we're reading from right to left. Wehaish anau, wehaish anayo, meod mikol ha adam. Meod, meod means very much. So he was anau, he was anayo, anayo, meod. He was very much anau. He was very much anayo. Right? Mikol, mikol from all ha adam, from all the Adam. Right? So here we have Ha Adam, Ha with a definite article, the Adam, from all the man, from all the humanity. The sense here brings out the superlative sense like from all man, right? All man contextually of his time, of his generation, right? Mikol Ha Adam, Asher, Asher, that which, that which who? That which who all upon pene, pene, pene is like the face, right? The aspect, the face, right? So he was very much anau, anayo, from all, right? From all the man that was upon the face, ha adama. Now you see ha adam right there, and here is ha adama. This is why you will hear I and I Yadin sometimes say, well, who was Adam's mother, right? Who was Adam's mother? Because the earth, the ground, in the Hebrew is known as the Adama. But here we have not just Adama, but the definite article, Ha Adama, right? And the Adama, Adama, with the He at the end, brings out the feminine aspect, right? So it says right here that Moshe was Anau. He was Anayu. Right? Now even this here links us with ancient Mitzrayim, right? So here we have the H6035. Anayo, Anau, Anau, Anau. Right? Here the BDB Browns Drivers Briggs brings out poor, humble, afflicted, meek, poor, needy, weak, afflicted. Now it's usually the D, the D entry that is pointed to humble. He was humble. He was lowly. He was meek. Here you we find that the word as a part of speech is a noun masculine. Now it says that the second form is by intermixture with the H6041 from the H6031. Right? So we have two other Hebrew points of reference here. But first this. Depressed, figuratively. In mind, he was gentle. Right? Or in circumstances, he was needy. 
right? But this needy sense brings out this saintly, this set apart sense. And thus, after the colon and the hyphen is the words that are usually found in association with the translation in the, say, the King, King James Version. Humble. So we find this word, anal, anal, anayo, anal, anayo, right? As humble, lowly, meek, or poor. But let's get into the roots right here. So they say, for intermixture of the H6041. So here we have ani. Now here is the key. In Hebrew, we say ani. Ani means I, but ani, ani, ani. Some enunciate as oni, 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 oni. This is different than ani. So this is why the proper enunciation right of the glyphs matter there's the alef which is a soft a sound and there's the ain here we have a ain onni 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 right onni onni poor humble wretched afflicted humble lowly right but the sense here is to be humble depressed in mind or circumstances now there is the like um subjectively right now we're looking at the objective right as the objective form of the word so we looking at both the subjective like like the from i sense is the subject and then also looking at it objectively so we have afflicted humble lowly needy poor but now getting to the root right here let's go down here right here let's get to the h6031 we have anna 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 now anna is an interesting word Anna, to be occupied, to be busy with. So if you're busy, occupied, this can afflict you. You can feel downpressed, but it also can be a humbling. See, it all depends on what's going on subjectively and how the, the subject can objectify it, right? So though he was afflicted and downpressed, even in Moshe's role, that responsibility that he had, right? But he was humble, right? He was humble afflicted and also to be bowed down now here's what's interesting that the 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 what's that called again um the um ibis the ibis so the ibis headed the chasida the ibis headed the stalk right the ibis headed stalk notice the that symbol that is used for tehut or taught or thoth right that symbol there the ibis head Right? What animal is that? Study that particular animal. And we can see some of what the word here brings out within the, the, the natural, natural, the natural sense of even the living creature. So we can see how the linguistics, the meaning of words, also the hieroglyphs, right? To bring out the image or the determiner of what is being spoken to really helps to fully prove the point right here 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 right so right here you know as we get into a little bit more of it right there so notice there's the ani the ani aspect is interesting the ani right we have the ani ani oni right ani oni ani i am oni i am humble i am poor i am afflicted right and now think about the ibis right the ibis headed you know that particular creature, right? Even by the Nile, by the Nile River, you know, you know, um, you, you know what I mean? Humble, like they say, you know, there, there's that idea of like keep your head in the sand. Well, that creature almost does this. It doesn't really do this, but it's very humble. It's, it's a humble creature, right? So we are seeing the, um, how can we say? We're seeing both the 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 outer aspect. But then the outer aspect also reflects that inner aspect. This is what we were saying about how these principles, the intent of true spirituality is that the true principles might be personified, right? Because we already can see that the, that the, like the bad principles, we can see evil principles personified, but in true spirituality where those good principles are also personified. Right. See, this is that fullness of where man or humanity, according to the Hebrew narrative, fell from. Right. 
they were created in his image note that right there the image the faculty of speech word sound power, and logic right and after his likeness right so even as we look at the word even as we look at the meaning right and even when we look at the word pictures right even the the glyphs the drawings the hieroglyphs the paintings you know what animal or what is being you know painted what is being projected right there what what's the meaning of that now there's a point that we want to make right here we'd like to make this right here right now here just getting into you know this root right here but let's bring this up right here that moses right so here we're in numbers chapter 12 verse 3 now when we go over here right to matthew right matthew chapter 11 verse 29 also in the king of kings bible the authorized revised amharic bible right the lion of the tribe of judah revelation 5 and 5 bible this verse here in the amharic also identifies yeshua yesus iusu right yeshu yeshua as being right as being tahut right take my yoke up on you and learn I remember said Moshe was what? Learned, right? And learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye all shall find rest to your souls. Right? So here, just to prove this right here, let's bring up the Amharic right here, just to do due diligence right here. Did this go off? I think this went off. Did this go off? We have to search it out again. Give me one moment, brothers and sisters, here to put to, right, who, it's right up there, I can just click on it, to who, so we have this here, Yifalgu, okay, there's 10 entries of this word, right, notice there's 10 entries in the Metzhaf Kedus, in the King of Kings Bible, from Old to New Testament, right, uh, and, and of these, it seems like, okay, one, two, you know about maybe seven seven of them are properly right seven of them are properly referring to tahut right tahut in this sense the thoth connection so here we have mateos here we go right here mateos let's see if we can bring this up mateos matthew chapter 29 here we go right there matthew chapter Slicker. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. Matthew chapter 11, verse 29. Ye Mateos Wengel. Ken Berein Belayachu. Teshekamu. Kenem Tamaru. Ene Yewah. Belibem Tehut Nenina. Le Nefsachum. Ereft Tagenyalachu. So basically, it's the basic verse, Ken Berein. My yoke belayachu upon you teshekmu, my teshekmu, and always almost like take my yoke or you know put my yoke like shoulder my yoke, almost like to say burden shoulder my yoke upon you, kanem and from I, temaru and learn from I, in a I I myself per, personal pronoun in them hark in a yewa 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 say like humble belibeim. And in heart to hoot, and heartically belibeim, and in my heart belibeim to hoot nenna nenna. I am for I be, mine for I be humble, and in heart I be humble, and in heart I'm lowly. I'm to hoot in that sense, like the ibis. Right? Le nefsachum, and for your souls, your collective soul, psyche, ereft, 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 rest, ereft, tagenyalachu, you will find rest. So that word there that's highlighted also shows and proves, and this also matches perfectly with the gutters. When we study this, this is the Royal Amharic, the King of Kings Bible, the Book of the Seven Seals, Revelation 5.5. 5. When we compare this with the ancient Ethiopic manuscripts, right? It, this, this, especially the part about Ene Yawah, Belibeim Tehut Nenyana, which says Yawah, Yawah Ana, Yawah Ana, my Ana, 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 and the good is to say I, Yawah Ana. And he says, um, 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 Tehuta Libye, 
Tehuta Belibie, Tehuta Libye, like humble, humble hearted. I am Tehut, I am Thoth, Thoth hearted. Now, let's just note this right here, right, as we just sum this up right here. So Moshe clearly is identified with Tehut, both directly, right, in the King of Kings Bible, right? And also we can make the Ana, Anao, Anao, Ani, the Ani, right? The papyrus of who? Ani, they say? Is that the same Ani? Let's look at the glyphs. Is it a hard A or a soft A? Now, if it's a hard A, like the hard A we have in Hebrew, right? Then we got, we got more to say. But right here, 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 Moshe is clearly identified with Tehut. Why is this important? This is important, especially even in our Torah studies and even Hebraically. This is very, very important. Why is this very important? Well, it's very important. Let's go to the scripts, all right? And it says, to the law, right, and to the testimony. If they speak not like this, it's because there is no light in them. So let's look up something right here where Moses, right, is said to be a god, right, to Pharaoh. Do you remember that right there? Moses is said to be that he has been made a god to Pharaoh. It's in chapter 7. There we go right there. Now, ignore, if you will, you know, they have capital G and lowercase g. That's just an English Western Gentile convention. But actually, it's not right and accurate, right? It's kind of a subjective convention right there, right? We say word sound, how something, you know, people can spell a word like this and say, don't say it like that, but say it like this. And you say it like that, but the word is still written like this. Right? So, you know what I mean? You see the contradiction there. But here, Exodus chapter 7, verse 1, it says, And Yahweh, hey, Hakadosh Baruch Hu, Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be He, blessed be His name, said to Moses, to Moshe, See, I have made thee a God to Paro, to Pharaoh, to, to Pharaon, the great house. And Aharon, Achika, thy brother shall be Nabieka, shall be thy Nabi, shall be thy prophet. Now, note this right here. In Exodus chapter 7, verse 1, can we learn in Numbers chapter 12, verse 3, that Moshe was anal, right? He was anal, he was humble, right? According to the Ethiopic now, getting to the roots and the direct connection, both of Moses and his Ethiopian relation. See, what we need to really look at is Moshe's Ethiopian relation. Remember, he left... Mitzrayim, right, after the whole um, killing, right, people say murder, we say it was more like killing, right, but be that as it may, he did have a murder charge, and so he left Mitzrayim, right, he went into the wilderness, he went into Arabia, right, he went over in that region, and he also went into Ethiopia. Mm. Otherwise, how could we then read about Moshe's Ethiopian wife? And then Miriam, note this, that Miriam, she seemed to have had some sort of problem. Some say it was because he, how he treated his wife. Others say it's because that she was an Ethiopian. Not because she was particularly black in that sense. No mention of that is stated, right? But perhaps it has something to do with the politics of ancient Mitzrayim. Right, the politics of their time. Remember, these people have lived all their lives. Moshe, the three of them, especially the three of them, because Jehovah says that He sent that Trinity. He sent three of them. Right, He sent Moses, right, Aaron, and Miriam, right, to bring His people, right, the Hebrews, right, the Bnei Yisrael, Mimitzrayim, out of Egypt. But here, He's saying Yahweh. Right, Jehovah is saying to Moses, look, see, see this. Look at the Hebrew right there. Rea, Rea. They have Ra, but Rea. Right? If you know the point, Rea, to see, Rea. See. Right? Rea. Rea. See. See, we have here we have Rea. Right? If we look at the word for evil, it, the transliteration will look similar. They will have an A A there. Right? But we have, this is Aleph, so it's a soft A, Rea, Rea. The other word for evil is Ra'a, 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 because Ah is that Ain. This is why it's very, very important. Right? Remember that image of Ha Elohim, Ha Elohim, right, is that faculty of speech, 
Notice when he breathed into man, that faculty of speech, man became a living soul, that faculty of speech, right, of logic, of expression, word, sound, power. So here it says, see, re'e, re'e, I have made thee a God, a Elohim, to paro. Let's look at this, brothers and sisters. Let's look at this right here. Let's go down to Tanakh right here. Right, so we have the Tanakh. What does it read? Wayomer Yahuwah El Moshe Re'e. See right here, proper as, properly as a imperative. This is like a command. If I say to a man, Re'e, Re, Re, Re'e, Re'e. If I say to a man, Re'e, Re, right, Re, 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 Re. I'm saying see. You're like, see, look, 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 see, see, see. Re, re. So here Moses is told to see, right? To see. This must be perceptible. Overstand that. When you say to somebody, re, or see, right? To see something, you, we could be speaking of a thought or an idea, right? But we know that, you know, thoughts and ideas also have their so called real world manifestation. So re, ne, tatika. Nitatika, I have given. So he says, Re, see, Nitatika, Nitatika, this word here, Nitatika, Nitatika. Someone say, Nitatika, Nitatika, Nitatika. Ka, speaking to you directly, male. I have given Nitati, I have given Ka, I have given the I, male. Elohim, Elohim, I've given you. Right, Elohim le far o, le far o, le far o, for far. I've given you Elohim. Right, so so that's that's the direct the the literal direct Hebrew sense of it. But now the that's the letter of the we say the law, but the spirit of it. I have given you as an Elohim. I've given you as a God. In other words, almost, I'm giving, I'm empowering, I'm giving you the authority to be a God, le faro. Now, how is Moshe going to be a God to faro if he's not a God that faro can recognize? Think about that for a moment. You know, like if, if, if someone is a, a Christian and they're expecting Jesus and they think Jesus like this or like that and someone comes along like that, they, they would accept that more likely as perhaps this is the, my God or the God that I deal with, right? But if you are a Buddhist and you send somebody like Jesus, the person's a Buddhist is not going to recognize that or vice versa. The person a Christian, you send a Buddhist to them. So I'm putting this into context because where are they in Mitzrayim? He says, Re'ei nitatika Elohim lefar'o. Where Aheron, where and Aheron and Aaron, Achika, Achika, the eyes Ach, the eyes brother, Achika, Achika, the eyes brother, Yihye, Yihye, Yihye shall be, shall be, he shall be, he shall become Nibieka, Nibieka, he shall become your Nabi, Nibieka, your Nabi, Nabieka. Right, your Nabiye, right, your prophet, right. So here, 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 Moses is said to be right on the command of Yahweh, hey, right, of Yahuwah Hakadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, the Holy One. Blessed be He, blessed, prospered, increase, be the name, right. He's saying to Moses, He's giving Moshe. Now, why would He do this? If we read the narrative elsewhere in the scripture, right, he says, and in the prophets, there is no Elohim. Before him, there was no Elohim, and neither is there after him. And in the ten words, the Esaret Barim, he says, we shall have no other Elohim before he who be who he be, in Exodus chapter 20. So now, is this a contradiction? You can imagine it's so, but it's not. It's not a contradiction. I have given you why. Because Moshe could be trusted, right? And if we go to the Brit Chadasha, to the Epistle to the Hebrews, to see that he was most trusted in all the house, he, he could be trusted. Why? Because he was Tehut. Because he was Tehut Anau, Anayu. Right? He, he had a very humble character. He would not allow being an Elohim to Paro, to Pharaoh, 
to, 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 to swell his head, to, to big up himself, to big up his head. Because he in his nature, in his innermost of his innocence was anao, anayo, to hoot, to hoot. So this verse right here, right, basically proves, right, what we have been saying even over here. This, this gives further, right, this gives further substantiation, right? What we're seeking to do is to give further substantiation to what we're saying. Right, because we started out with Acts of the Apostles, right? We went to the Amharic, the King of Kings Bible, right? We said the Royal Law, the Royal Torah, right? And we see in Numbers chapter 12, verse 3. You know what I mean? We also point to the, the Ethiopia ancient connection with ancient Kemet, ancient Mitzrayim, right? We also point to the narrative within the scripture, even in the Torah portion where this is found, right, concerning Moses being most tahut, most meek, right? And now notice that tahut, what sort of, in Egyptian parlance, what sort of netter? Notice he's a netter equals Elohim, right? He's a netter equals Elohim. This particular netter, this particular Elohim. Now here's what's interesting. That if we study Tehut, now Tehut is interesting if you really, you know, go back to the most ancient time, to some of the creation mythos, you know, from the most ancient time. Remember ancient Mitzrayim, ancient Egypt had a very long, you could say a very long run, as it were, right? So we have the old kingdom, right? We have the, the, the intermediate periods. We got the, 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 the middle kingdom, right? We have the new kingdom. So many of their beliefs and ideas principally in many ways stay the same, but some things also change. You know, there were some like algamations, like there was Ray and then there was Amun and then it became Amun Ray, right? And also with Tehut, right? Also was given, if you go back to what was said in some of the ancient creation, you know, writings, some of the oldest writings, at least refer to the earliest thoughts and ideas concerning their netters, their gods, their creation. We can see the link between Re, right, and how Tehut, right, or Thoth was deputized. Do you recall that? How Re, the one they call Ra, but how Re, Roi, had deputized Tehut, right, to represent him. Right, and he withdrew from the earth. As it says, Elohim, Allah, Allah, Elohim, Allah, Elohim. Elohim ascended. He ascended from the earth because of the wickedness of men and because of the serpents. Right, because of the serpents. And he deputized, so to speak, to Hoot, right, to represent him. Right, and anyone who would pray to Roi, Re, you could say the high God of that time, right the gods that come from Kui land, the Kush land, right, that they could go to him. Now, I point this out because it is very interesting to see the principle that is being fulfilled here, both from the ancient Kemetic, right, concerning this particular Netta, right, or Netcha, right, this particular Elohim, and also what it says in Exodus, in Exodus chapter 7, verse 1, where Yahuwah, where Jehovah, right, says to Moses, look, like see, re'e, see, I have given you natit, natit, natatika, natatika Elohim. I've given you as an Elohim le faro. And note what he says. He doesn't stop it there. There's not a period there. And he says, we're Aharon and Aaron, Achika, thy brother, Yehye Nabieka, and thy brother Aaron shall be thy prophet. Now notice, what usually happens? Most ones don't usually speak to the God, but most ones will speak to the, to the prophet. It's like, don't speak to me, speak to the hand. <laughs> you know, now notice what the hand, notice what the hand of Tehut does. I want you to note this. He also, he writes, he's the scribe. Right? He's the writer. He's the scribe. Right? So let's also understand Muse, Ethiopically, is a name, but it's also a title. It's a title and it's a name. Then the Muse sense is the head of a fraternal order. Right? And since the scripture says very clearly in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 7, 
right? Verse 22, that Moshe was learnt, right? He was learnt. Remember how Moshe says, learn of me? He was learnt, right, in all of the hakmat, right? The hakmat of Mitzrayim, the wisdom of Egypt. So the wisdom usually referred to like wisdom schools, like the, this higher education. Remember that Moshe had grown up, right, until he was like 40 years of age, right, in the lap of the dynasty, uh, of the nobility. In fact, Moshe was and could have asserted his right to be the new Sutan Bitti, the new Sutan Bait, the new Sutan Bat, to be the new, you could say, king or ruler, because he had actually stronger connection being my right, the son of Pharaoh's daughter of Hatshepsut. But with the particular murder and killing incident that had occurred, and then he ran right into the wilderness, into Median. And note this: he left Mitzrayim at 40 years of age. So that means he was familiar, no doubt, up to that age. Right? He recognized he was a Hebrew, right? Like many of us may know we're Hebrews, but we're educated in a lot of other things of the world, right? We can assume high office in some worldly things, right? Because of our knowledge, experience, and environment, you know? But then we also recognize that we are Hebrews, and he identified with his people, with his Hebrew people, right? And because of that mitzvah, <laughs> we can say that, that good deed that he was seeking to do, right, on behalf of his people, he ended up as a fugitive, right? A fugitive. And no doubt there was ones looking for him. Now, we also find that Moses, he has an Ethiopian wife. Now, what's clear in the narrative is that Sipara, Sipara is not a Ethiopian, a Kushit, according to her Torah. She's a Medini, right? Medini, a Medianite. A Medianite. She's a Medianitish, Isha, or Oset, Eshet, Oset, woman, wife, right? But then later on in the book of Numbers, we find they had the Kushawit, right? And then also ancient artifacts have been found in Ethiopia. I think one of the brothers, um, the one who does the um, that series, uh, uh, the Negro Question series, he also, I saw there was a picture in his book, and I saw this picture before, right? But he really put it together. It was of a statue that was called a statue Moshe or Muse in Ethiopia, found back in the 17 or 1800s. You know, I think it was slightly toppled over, but you could still see it, right? And some had alluded that this could this be referring to Moshe. And also in Judaic studies as well, right? So in ancient Judaic writings, you know, extra Torah and scripture writings also point, right, to Moses serving as a general, right, within the Ethiopian armies. Now, Ethiopia, as we call Ethiopia, the Tob, Tobia today, would have been Upper Kush. See, they always try to mix you up and say, oh, Kush was Nubia. No, Nubia was Lower Kush, right, as you get into the highlands, the mountain of the moon region, Right, where we have Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, Uganda, Zimbabwe, all those countries right there, there, there. As you get there, then you're getting into Upper Kush, the highlands, what's called the rooftop of Africa. Right? That's the highlands where the mountain that's a source where we get the source of the waters, the source of the inundation. And the inundation of the Nile was life. For those in the now valley civilization. So the Kemet, the Komet, literally came from Ethiopia. Right? So that's just a natural, physical, very important substance for the life and well being of the ancient Mitzrayi. Right? But now we're looking at the ancient roots of even the culture and the civilization by studying the linguistics, the language comparative studies and here right harmonizing the truth of the hebrew scriptures right as we include all the pertinent resources and not neglecting right the israelites of ethiopia and the royal order of the ethiopian hebrew so which elohim right or netter did moshe be lifaro 
like which nature or Elohim or God was Moses to Paro? Well, it should be obvious now that it was Tehut. It was Tehut, right? It was Thoth, right? And then we can see the characteristics of Tehut and the characteristics of Thoth. It's like going to school or going to university. Many ones go to universities in foreign country. Do they or do they not? Are there not many ones and ones even today who attend universities in foreign countries? Might have been born in a foreign country and grow up in a foreign country. And then if you find that the foreign country is not good, you know, for you and for your people, you will leave with that knowledge, that experience of the foreign country. You know, what you learned that was, you could say, science and principle, right? But you will still keep your own culture. Right? You preserve your own story, preserve your own history, and there's absolutely no plagiarism in that. You see, this whole foolish thing, right? this is all part of another level of COINTELPRO that's going on, trying to say that the Hebrews, especially we of the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews, we're at the very root, not just of the Kemetic civilization right? or the Mesopotamian civilizations, but also the Hebrew the key link to follow up with here, right, is getting to the very roots of this Afro-Asiatic, this Afro-Semitic language. So Moshe being learned in all the wisdom of the Egypts. And who is the most learned Netcher, right? The most learned Elohim. Think about it. It's that order, that order of Tehut, that order of Toth, right? That order of Tehut. Right there, there, there. So not only was Moshe learned in the wisdom of, we say, Mitzrayim, but also of the Tob, of Tobia, of Kui, of Kush, right? Of Kush as well, right? Because of his experience. Remember, Moses came back to deliver, we could say, deliver the people 40 years later. So he spent half of his life, right? Up to the point of the Exodus, up to the point of like Exodus chapter 7, verse 1. He spent half of his life, right, in, in, in the Hedkapita, Egypta, Gibbet, Egypt, Kemet, right, Mitzrayim. And then he spent the next 40 years, right, between his Medeanite, you know, family, right, and Median, right, when we look at the ancient regions of that and we recognize how. Arabia and Africa had close relations and people went to and fro and a lot of these people were melanated black peoples too, right? And also how the ancient Egyptians regarded, right, the South, right, as well as the South East to be holy lands. That means the Ethiopia, the Horn of Africa, and across the Etra Bahir, the Eritrean Sea, the Red Sea, the Yemen and Arabia to be holy lands. This is from the Egyptians' own record of themselves. So this is where Moshe's second, the second level, right, of his education. So a lot of his general education came from Egypt and even some special education, but even more of the special education came from the very root, from the very root of ancient Egyptian culture, the Nile Valley culture. So one can even postulate, you know, or put forward that, well, his knowledge, if he really got that learning in all of the Egypts, right, and also, because there was, there was, when we say the other Egypts, people often don't include Ethiopia, but Ethiopia is that root. The, when I say Ethiopia, I'm not talking about just Ethiopia today on the map, but I'm including all those countries, right, you know, as one country, as one root, Right there, speaking of Ethiopia, speaking of Kenya, speaking of Tanzania, speaking of Wakanda, Uganda, speaking of Zimbabwe, right? So he was able to go to the root. You see what I'm saying? When you go to the root and you learn the principles and the truth of the root, you can always defeat the derivatives. Because the derivatives were derived from the root. It's like what Hawari Apalos, Brother Paul says, right? Um, you have been grafted, you as a wild olive tree have been grafted in, right, to the natural tree. And as he broke off the natural branches, right, he can break off those, those unnatural branches. So I'm saying that to say that when Moshe got the other 40 years 
after his first 40 years as the son of Pharaoh's daughter, son of Hatshepsut, that there he was able to even, one can speculate and put forward that if he went to the root culture, even the Egyptians regarded the higher knowledge, the ancient knowledge to be in that kind of no man's land that the first time, they talk about the first time, the Zatepi, Hebrews we call it the Kedem, the Kedem, you know, also has a sense of looking to the east, but also going to the first times. So Moshe, Moshe was Tehut. Moshe was a type of Thoth. Right? This is why in the first contest, you receive the magicians and the wise men step forward. Because they figure that, well, Moses, you know, we know where you're from. You know, you used to be one of us. In fact, one of the dramas that's not really overtly kind of understood, but if you study the text, one of the dramas there is whether Moshe is coming to claim the throne. This was one of the fears, right, of Paro. Right? Notice how Paro, uh, Moshe could walk in, he could walk out, he could speak his peace, so forth and so on, and no hand was laid on him. Note, note that right there. See, the scripts don't go into all that detail because if you really are reading it truly, reading not just the letter right, of the law, but the spirit of the law, you begin to detect that right there because something else is going on. And the evidence is right there in front of us, just as we just have connected the Tehut connection right here, here, here. So when it said, who wrote the Bible? Right? Well, we know that even Tehut was the scribe. Right? He was a scribe of who? He was a scribe of the gods, of the Elohim. Moshe, he becomes the, the, the scribe or the chief right, of the scribes, right, of Eloheinu, of Yahweh, hey, Yahweh, HaKadosh, Baruch Hu, Baruch Hashem. So here, here, going to seal this up right here, as we've been speaking about from beyond, right? Look at this right here, from beyond, it depends on which direction we are looking at. Right? Notice all it was circled right there. Right? This is where Moshe was able to get to that root area. Remember, 40 years. Right? 40 years. Right? 40 years is a whole lot of time right? to master you know, what he needed to master. And also note this, that even though Moshe, he mastered these things, what's very clear is that he always kept, as we would say, a humble, a humble profile. Right? And when the scripture says that he was, he was God, right? or Yahweh had made him a Elohim right? to Paro within the Egyptian context, I think it should be quite clear, you know, especially when we look into the Meshkinet, into Judgment Hall, because all these things are being played out. Right? The entire, you say, Egyptian or Mitzrayim, Kemetic, especially among the suits and Bitti, the, like the kings. Because the kings had also, you could say, their belief in, in, we could say, in the Egyptian mysteries were even more so. Because they were said to be personifications of these principles, personifications of these netchers, these netter, netteru. Right? So now here we have Moshe, right, representing a somewhat despised people and even Moses himself because of what he had done did who he was and what he had done did now coming back there's there's a height of tension here right but notice that no one laid hands this is where now we can build the comparison between Moshe as Tehut as thought right and Yeshua HaMoshiach as one who in heart is Tehut right and so on this level, we can see how Moshe was as well a man after <laughs> the heart, right? according to the heart. This here, Elohim describes Moses as being faithful in all my house. Right? Moses is described as being faithful in all my house. The book of Hebrews elaborates that Moshe was a faithful, was faithful, right? And the faithful word in the Hebrew, Afro-Shemitic, has to do with the Amen. The Amen, right? Amen. And even in the Torah portion, he calls himself Aman, right? The Amen, right? Moses was faithful as a servant to testify to the things that were to be spoken later. So Moshe, being faithful as a servant, 
The purpose was to testify to things that were to be spoken later. All right? So Moses is testifying to things. This is the prophetic spirit. Testifying to things that later would be spoken of. But Moshiach, the Messiah, Christos, Christ, Moshiach, is faithful over Elohim's house as a son. Here referring to Hebrews chapter 3 verses 5 to 6. So let's reason on the analogy that Robenu, Adonainu, Yeshua HaNotri, he is greater than Moshe in the sense of as the builder of a house of a bait, a bayit, a bait is greater than the bayit, than ha bayit, than the bait itself, right? Like for example, the builder of the Beta Israel is greater than I and I as the Beta Israel. Likewise, Beta Rastafari, Rastafari. So here, here, here. Shalom, Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom. This is Ras Adonis Tafari. This is Yad and Ben Chayil. Here, here, here. LOJ Society. Check us out. LOJS.org. Like, share, subscribe. Also check us out on the Rastafari Israelites, the evenings from 10 to 1, 10 to 1, the evening podcast, the live stream on Mondays, it's a half an hour later, 10.30, so join I and I on the end and the iron. Shalom Rastafari, yes I, give thanks.